Yo, uh, Mouth Breather came in today with their new single. So I'm just going to let you hear some of it right now. And then I'll show you some nerdy stuff here in a second. So I'm just going to start by playing like two parts that I really like. The beginning of the song. And then there's this one part that's just completely ridiculous. So heavy. I'm not even like a huge fan of this type of music. Sorry, Nick. Uh, Nick produces, he works at the studio and works at his own studio too. And uh, he did this at his place and it sounds amazing. Um, but what I like about it is that the mix doesn't just, it, the mix sounds like performances. And I want to show you this like one passage that's like my favorite part of the song. It reminds me of Dillinger Escape Plan. It's totally crazy. And it's just smart and inventive. And the mix doesn't just sound like a bunch of drum samples put on a grid, which I get really bored with really quickly. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's like the lead up. You'll see here, this is like the part that I'm talking about. I'll make this bigger, AKA more fun. Is that more fun? <laughs> What I love about that part is the inventive use of dynamics and creative composition, things coming in and out and like, again, spots you wouldn't necessarily expect them to, but like spots that are just smart and fun and keep me really engaged and just things that it just doesn't sound like I've heard like a million times before. Okay, that's enough complimenting the band, although they're very good, mouth breather, love you. Uh, let's uh, look at the master stuff. All right, so quickly, let's just listen to what it sounded like uh, pre. The mix is great. They wanted more sub, so I'm gonna like kind of whip through this as fast as I can to not make this a super long video. So we added sub with my favorite thing to add sub with, that's the EQ4. But then anyone who's watched enough of my videos knows I love to control the sub that I add so that we get a bigger but tighter overall low end. You'll see that here, primarily focusing on the kick. And I'll solo that real quick. I always like to compress what I kind of call the outside the club frequencies. Uh, Soothe here, I'm using mostly for the screams. You'll see I have it in mid side mode and I'm doing only mid. There's like, you know, people, different people's screams sort of like occur in different frequency spaces. So. This was sort of near like that telephone frequency stuff. So this way I don't attenuate because we're only in mid. I don't attenuate like the mid range that I want in the guitars that are panned out to the side. And I just kind of focus on the middle um, and smooth that out a little bit. Okay, so, and then this next plugin Pro Q3, is like basically a modern classic. Uh, this is where I do a ton of sort of just like micro shaping. We'll just walk through stuff. So I added sub, as we know, with EQ4. Then I compress that sub here with Pro MB. And then we'll skip soothe because that has nothing to do with the sub. And we went here. What I found is after we did some different versions and testing that just I pushed it a little too far. So here is I'm taking like that Titan sub, which you can derive by adding the sub stuff and tightening the sub stuff. And now I've got a more consistent sort of like low end that I'm just kind of like slightly rolling down. That seems to clear things up and give us a little bit more headroom down there, which I think is cool. Um, and then in our sort of high base, our non sub base around 80, this is like your subwoofer area. I'm doing expansion. So let's solo that. Expansion is sort of like the redheaded stepchild of recording. Everyone always talks about compression. Like you never hear about expansion, but expansion can be really cool because that means that, okay, we made all that sub, we rolled that off, but like, then I want like the warmer sort of like, I call it like the low end that kind of has a bloom to it. So those upper frequencies that are really gonna resonate right at the crossover point, if you have a subwoofer or whatever it is, but it's also the point where like, 
80 on a lot of systems is the absolute lowest frequency that a lot of playback devices can even replicate. So in that case, I'm adding more dynamic in the 80 area where you're going to be able to, be able to feel like the thud and the impact of the kick drum. I'm creating like this big sort of like pillowy sub stuff that I'm compressing. So I'm like making the sub stuff tighter. And then as I move up to like the 80, 90 hertz area where the bass guitar is and where like the warmer aspects of the kick low end are, those I'm actually making more dynamic, which makes them more impactful. He had a decent amount of low mids in the mix. And I was happy to see that because so often I get mixes that are scooped. Those sound like this. Again, I like a lot of this stuff to be dynamic in nature. You can see there's kind of a split between static EQs and like a lot of dynamic EQs. Um, in this case, well, again, which is rare, I actually wanted to dynamically attenuate the low mid range. I usually have to reinforce this, but uh, he did a great job. And in this case, I got to sort of like subtly scoop this, but not like in a scoop scoop way, but just like working with the music. This mid band, you can see I'm working on a scream. It was a little pokey, so I used uh, mid EQ and did a dynamic reduction. So I'm only really reducing when that scream gets super hot. Uh, and here I'm trading some high mid for some sheeny mid. So when we think about high mid range and high end, it's really easy to hear high mid range as high end. And like something I think maybe you get better at as you become a more experienced engineer is to know where that trade point is, where like, where do you have enough point that's like high mid range? And then like, where do you have enough sheen? That's let's call that like 6K and above, 7K and above. So this felt very exciting, but given the references that I was given, I was like, let's like trade a little bit of that and just add a little bit of sheen. Okay, and last thing in the chain is my real Varimu. Again, if you're watching my videos recently, I bought another real Varimu. I'm so pumped to have it. It's like my favorite stereo bus compressor ever. So the, all I can do here is tell you that we're doing about negative two dB of gain reduction. And when I bypass it, you should hear a difference. So I'll, I'll leave it on and I'll turn it off and I'll put it back on. I'm not even making this up. I'm getting a text from Nick right now. I don't know if we'll be able to see this. Uh, let me try to focus on it. He says like the manly is making the drums sound insane. Exposure is going to be all messed up. My focus is going to be all messed up. That's better. But I agree with him that very mute is just crazy. It's no wonder that it was like the compressor that you heard on 90% of the music on the radio for decades. Um, so happy to have one back in the studio. And I feel like it's just like the ultimate tool to just like glue everything together. So thank you Manly for making such killer products. And I'm gonna cut this video short now. Uh, yes, I added limiting. The limiting wasn't that exciting. Uh, I used Pro L2 and I brought it up to a great gain staging level. It just wouldn't have worked had I not made all of the moves that you saw before that. So there you go. That's mastering metalcore. Is this deathcore? I don't even know what genre this is. It's heavy. Comment if you know what genre this is. I don't know.